Good morning. Welcome to Miss Paula's place and happy Friday. It's a beautiful day today and I was hearing the birds sing first thing this morning. So that's how I decided what book to pick today. And I'm glad you're here and I hope that I think all of you are probably on summer vacation now. And the book I'm going to read today is called Sydney, the story of a kingfisher. A kingfisher is a type of bird. You see the beak is very long and it's like some wild hair. The feathers uh, stick up on the top. And it's written by two authors. It's a, it's a co-authored book. So two people wrote it together. One is John Mui and the other is Jane Strachan. We've read one book by her already called Unicorn, named Beulah May. And Ms. Strachan, she illustrated this. Now, what you're gonna see a little bit of, friends, in the illustrations, it's like a real uh, pale, real fine sketch with a pencil. And then she's taken some colored pencils and added just a little bit of color. So Ms. Paula will do the best she can about showing you uh, the, the illustrations up close today, okay? So, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm gonna take, this book has a jacket. We talked about that before. As a jacket, it keeps the cover safe. <clears throat> so here we go. The story of Sydney, the Kingfisher. Now the very first page are lots of sketches of what a kingfisher bird looks like. Sydney, the kingfisher, watched from a nearby branch as his father hovered momentarily above the water and then dropped into a straight dive with a beautiful motion, splash, right into the river. And he came up with a fish. <gasps> Sidney was so proud of his father. He wanted to catch a fish too, but he was too frightened to dive head first into the water. Well, I'll bet I can catch a fish without diving headfirst into the water, said Sydney. I'll hide in the bushes all along the shore, and the fish won't see me. The fish couldn't see Sydney, but guess what? Sydney couldn't see the fish either. Sounded like a good idea, didn't it? I'll try something different. I'll go into the water tail first, said Sidney. He created such an enormous splash that he couldn't see any fish. Seemed like another good idea, didn't it? Sidney flew back to talk to his mother and father. Nothing I try is working. I may never catch a fish, said Sidney. Oh, be patient and don't give up, said his parents. Other birds know how to catch fish, thought Sydney. There must be an easier way. I'll ask them. So off he flew. Hmm, it's probably a good idea a little bit. And this is the next bird he is going to ask. I wonder if you know what this kind of bird is. Hmm. Let's find out. I bet you might know what it is. It's not a bird that lives in Michigan, but you may have seen one before on the TV or on a vacation. The first bird Sydney talked to was a big old white pelican. Look at the beak on that pelican. Mr. Pelican. How do you catch fish? asked Sydney. The pelican looked at Sydney and said, I sit on top of the water, and at just the right moment, I dunk my head under the water and scoop up the fish in my large beak. 
Fish swim very fast, so I may, must not forget to try, try, and try again, Sydney. Hmm. Paula's having a little trouble with the pages today. There we go. Sydney sat on the surface of the water, and he dunked his head just like Mr. Pelican, but his beak was too small, and his neck was too short, and the fish swam away. Sydney couldn't fish like a pelican. Sydney thought for a moment, hmm, and then he flew off. Oh, he's going to ask another bird. Look at Miss Strachan's illustrations of this bird. Look at these, they're called talons. Look at them like a toe of the bird, they're called talons. <gasps> Sydney flew to the bald eagle, a majestic bird and a wonderful fisherman. Mr. Eagle, how do you catch fish without diving headfirst into the water? Well, no need to dive headfirst into the water, Sydney. Just watch me. So the eagle glided down toward the water reached out with his strong talons, and he picked up a huge fish right out of the water. Well, I'll try that, said Sydney. Rickety, you quick, 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 he called to, as he focused his eyes on a big fish just beneath the surface of the water. Oh no, groaned Sydney. I'm not strong enough to lift this fish, and I don't have powerful feet like Mr. Eagle. So Sydney flew off to find a new teacher. <clears throat> I wonder who's next. Hmm, this is an interesting bird. Look. Looks like it has some talons also, and a, some really tall, skinny little legs. Hmm, I wonder who this, what bird this is. Sydney flew to see the night heron, who doesn't have powerful feet or an enormous beak, but he does have beautiful feathers on the back of his head, and he does catch fish. There's the, the feathers here. I think they look neat. Tell me, Mr. Heron, how do you catch fish without diving into the water head first and without a beak and powerful feet? In a very quiet voice, the heron whispered, you must be patient. Wade ever so quietly into the water late at night and sneak up on the fish in the dark. Oh, with great excitement, Sydney waited until it was dark. This is actually a page that was sketched. It was so dark, Sydney couldn't see any fish. He couldn't see anything. So hmm. oh, he can't fish like a heron, can he? The next day, Sydney felt like a failure. Hmm. Just then, he heard a sound. Sydney turned and he saw a chickadee on a branch looking for insects. That bird doesn't fish at all, said Sydney, but he is very good at catching his food. The chickadee looked at Sydney and asked, Who are you? I'm Sydney the Kingfisher, he said. And what do you do? I fish, said Sydney. Fish? How do you do that? asked the chickadee. Well, I can't fish like a pelican. I tried. 
and I can't fish like an eagle or a heron, even though I tried and tried. But you say you are a kingfisher. How does a kingfisher catch fish? Show me, said the chickadee. Well, Sidney pictured in his mind his father's beautiful dive. Then he thought about himself. Well, I am a kingfisher. Just then, Sydney spotted a fish. And in the next moment, he was diving toward the river head first. Splash! Into the water went Sydney, and out he came with a fish. I did it, cried Sydney, and he had. He caught a fish just exactly the way a kingfisher fishes. Sydney had tried to catch fish like the other birds, but discovered he couldn't do it their way. He could only be himself. And being himself was his greatest joy. You know, friends, sometimes we look at how other people do things and we wish that we could do them that way. And when we try to do it the way someone else has done it, and we may not do it what we think is right, sometimes we feel like a failure, kind of like Sydney. But what Sydney learned in his adventures of trying to keep uh, catch a fish the way everyone else was doing it, he couldn't. He reminded himself and he thought, I am a kingfisher. He was unique and he was just being himself while he learned to catch fish. And for us too, we are all created unique and we have our own ways. So when we compare ourselves to other people, sometimes it doesn't work out so well. So I want you to be excited today about who you are. Go out and watch the birds, see what else is outside, and be so grateful that you are you. And I am so glad that who you are is exactly who you need to be. Have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you next Friday at Miss Paula's place. Adios.